Hey everybody, welcome to a new Redbubble video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about why I recommend having multiple Redbubble stores. Now, I've still spoken about this before, but I've never made a dedicated video for this. And so I'm going to bring up every single topic or idea that I could possibly think of at this moment of why it actually matters to have multiple Redbubble stores, in my opinion. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about it. When you're doing Redbubble... There's a few reasons why you might want to have multiple stores. The first reason is creating a product uh, or creating a store around a specific niche. So I've seen people do this before and I've seen people do with general stores. But when you have a store that's all about one niche, what happens is, is a certain percentage of people who are interested in the type of product that you're selling are going to, you know, who are who are essentially... Uh, they know what they're doing when it comes to Redbubble. They've been on Redbubble before. They're avid consumers of Redbubble. They're click on. They're going to click on your store name. They're going to interact with you. They're going to send you messages on Bubble Mail. They're going to see what you're selling. They're interested. And if all of your designs are in the same niche, well, that's going to do two things for you. The first thing is that, number one, it's going to increase your average order value. And really what that means is that in your e-commerce store, in your Redbubble store, there's going to be a certain percentage of essentially a certain uh, probability that you have a certain level of sales. So let's say most of the time the probability of your store is one sale. So a consumer is going to come in and they're going to buy just one single product. So in that case, the average order value is the value of that one order, right? It could be a shirt, it could be a sticker, whatever, but it's one order, right? The average number of orders. Well, if you were to increase, let's say, or make it a, a, a niche-specific store, what could happen is, in that case, you're going to increase your average order value. People will go to your, your back to your store, they'll see things that are related to the design that initially got them interested, and they're going to add other products to their cart. And this happens more often than not, believe it or not, and people who have uh, multiple, um, or excuse me, people who have one product store, niche stores, excuse me, can go ahead and vouch for this in the comments. Um, what I typically tend to see is that consumers are looking for more of what they like. Now, in nature, this is something that seems obvious, but we don't all behave that way. I mean, think about it. Think of the amount of times we're on Redbubble and we've created general stores, which, by the way, is perfectly okay. At the end of the day, if you're creating designs and you're working hard on Redbubble and you're doing things that other people aren't doing and you're pushing yourself to move forward, you got to give yourself a pat on the back. You're pushing hard in life regardless. But there are certain advantages, like I said, that come with creating a single product, uh, a single niche store. One of those, like I just mentioned, is increasing that average order value, that small split chance to where a consumer comes to you and buys multiple of your products because they realize that you're the dominator in that niche. And it has happened to me before, all right? The next thing is, I'm going to be honest, just more sales in general. Redbubble typically awards people who are going hard in a specific niche. At least this is what I find. Now, not from an algorithmic perspective, but it seems like you just own more dominance in a specific niche. Think about it this way. Imagine uh, I had to pick a name out of a hat, right? And inside that hat, there were 700 names, a thousand names. But let's say you owned 500 out of that thousand or 500 out of that 700. Doesn't that increase dramatically that every single time I would pull out a paper out of that hat to read whose name it is, but it's your name most of the time, isn't that going to increase your chances? Well, I look at it the same way for Redbubble. If somebody creates a search on Redbubble where they search for, let's say, tiger, right, as an animal, and let's say out of the top designs, you're the one who has the majority, and it doesn't have to be the word tiger, it could be anything, tigers with flowers, right? It could be anything where you stand out. Like, for example, here, tigers with flowers, cute. 1,048 results. If you, What if you had, out of those 1,048, you added 1,700 designs? You worked for a whole entire month on that one store, you created 1,700 designs, you stuck by it, and you waited for the results. Wouldn't that give you such a much higher chance to actually get sales? Now, of course, there's a variable of design quality, there's, of course, uh, the variable of tagging and all that, but out of a hat, like I said, if we're picking randomly out of a hat, in terms of probability... Well, probability favors you, right? 
And we all know probability random sampling. I mean, there's really no favoring unless you're the dominant owner or you're essentially dominating the niche just by sheer numbers. So something that I would say to that, another huge benefit is ownership. Ownership over a specific niche, domination over a niche. And I've spoken about this before, but um, when I create my 60 designs per day, 1800 designs roughly a month, right? It just depends on the month. This month, it's going to be less than 1800. Leap year, 28 uh, days in the February month. Uh, but, you know, last month we had more than 30 days. We had 31 days. So the point is, is that when we create those specific designs, at first I'm testing things, yes. But the more I stick in that niche, the more I'm dominating towards a specific niche. Now, the the different stores that you'd build, some might be general. That doesn't mean that you should go back and delete your work and delete everything you've done or undo things that you've done. Don't do that. Just move into the future knowing, okay, this is a store that I have, let's say, 800 designs on. All right, this is a great store. It's making me money. It's a general store. Let me go ahead and try something different where now I focus on just one niche for this specific store. And guess what, guys? I know it can be hard sometimes to focus on a specific niche. So what you could do is you could create multiple stores and just, you know, flip through each one every other day. Like, for example, two days you work on store number one, another two days you work on store number three, another two days you work on store number four. Really, it doesn't matter as long as you're uploading as much as you possibly can, right? I'm not going to advise 60 designs for everybody, even though I have before. I realize that a lot of people can um, try their best to get to 60 designs and other people might struggle a little bit and that's perfectly fine. If you do struggle to create your 60 designs per day, I highly recommend you check out the Autopilot Passive Income POD Design Course. I've shown how I created 63 designs in 34 minutes, no need for niche research because it all takes care of itself. Like I said, everything's right in the course for you guys to go ahead and check out. It's all there, um, and we actually show how to optimize for other products along with that. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave the link in the description to this specific course. But once again, when you're creating your designs every single day on Redbubble, and you know you're, you're doing you know the hard work behind it there is a way that you can multiply your income. And when you just focus on one specific niche, you're also improving your design quality, which is really the third aspect. Because it's almost like you're becoming an expert in it. Imagine if you created 60 designs a day in the tiger niche, right? For a whole month. By the end of that month, you're going to know right off the bat what consumers want to buy, what consumers are looking for, what makes a better design over another, What's more likely for you to win in terms of tagging? You're going to learn all of that by nature. You're investing your time. You're investing your effort. Therefore, quality goes up. So just to revamp here uh, or, or kind of, you know, summarize, we talked about design quality, design tagging, design titling, all of that's going to improve. So overall quality of your work is going to improve in that 30 day period where you're focusing on one specific store or you're creating a quote unquote niche store, Right. You're also increasing your order, average order value. And thirdly, you're dominating that specific keyword, aka that specific niche. If you've taken the tagging course, we referred to the tagging course before, guys. But if you've taken the tagging course, you know very specifically that every keyword is its own niche entirely. Different results can potentially pop up and therefore it is its own niche. So that domination for its own niche is also important. Now, something that I also want to say, and this might be arguably one of the most important aspects of why creating a niche store is maybe better than creating a general store, is because a niche store by nature, there's less options to create. There's less designs that you could possibly create, right? But like by nature, if I was to create a general store, I could post pictures on anything, tigers, rabbits, uh, quotes, I could do anything I want. But if I'm sticking to, let's just say, one niche where it's just rabbits or it's just dragons or it's just tigers, well, the number is less. And what that does for me is that actually creates a safety barrier for me. I'll explain. If I create a general store, I'm sitting here and I'm creating designs for a whole entire year on one general store. And I build up that store to 10,000 designs. That's a great accomplishment. But guess what? I could do one thing, just one simple thing that can get that whole entire store gone in a second. 10,000 designs obliterated in a split second. But what if I was working on a third store, a fifth store, a tenth store, a twelfth store, 
and I do something wrong. Well, that's okay. Why? Because that one store is going to be taken out, but not the rest of my designs. So when you modular, when you kind of modulize or essentially come with up, come up with a modular plan where you where you separate or segment a certain amount of designs per each store, you're creating diversity, and that's protection in its nature. Diversity is protection, right? So something that I want to say on this topic is that, yes, Redbubble can decide to ban you permanently across all stores at once. That's a possibility. But there are many periods of times, and this is why I love Redbubble, is they're a very forgiving platform. They understand that people make mistakes. It's not like other platforms where they just permanently remove you. They understand sometimes people make mistakes, and they give you a second chance, a third chance, etc. So if that happens to be you, and let's say you get banned on one out of seven stores or six stores, that's okay. You have six other stores that you're making money from. But if you get banned on your only store that holds all the designs, that's a problem. See, I would much rather, let's just say 10,000 designs was the total. I would much rather to have 20 different stores with 500 designs on each than I would have one store with 10,000 designs. Just from a safety aspect. I don't care about the numbers. I don't care about the sale. I care about long-term protection. Now, there's a lot of people who care so much about long-term protection where they don't even post on Redbubble. They skip that whole process and they create their own website and they go and they stick to their own website, which is actually a beautiful thing to do. I highly recommend it. It's something that I'm currently doing. Now, I'm not going to leave Redbubble because it is a potential income source that I can make money off of, but it's something that I'm, I'm working on currently behind the scenes. And so something that I would say for everybody watching this is if you're going to have to pick between a niche store and a general store, I'd recommend niche uh, niche store. The benefits outweigh the uh you know the cons. There's really no cons to it. But if you are working with a general store, understand that that's perfectly fine. It's a good thing. And the fact that you're even doing work on Red Bull is a good thing. There's n nobody can take that away from you. Uh, what I would say is just maybe in the future, if you have the time, if you have the, you know, the desire to do it, try to create a niche store, see what kind of results that you can get into. And the way I look at it is creating a new store is almost like going on a new journey every single time you're learning new things, you're acquiring new skills. And at the end of the day, can't hurt, right? It can only help. So that's all I got to say for today. I've, I've had this request before where I had to, I wanted to make videos on this, but I got sidetracked and whatever. So at least I put this video up. It's something that I really wanted to do where I talk about niche stores versus, you know, a general store on Redbubble. I completely recommend niche stores. If you do have a general store, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a great opportunity to make money as well. There's just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more benefit with a general store. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and peace out. Bye.